Oh, right, it's the guy in here. This chef. Got that saltpeter yet? Got it right here. That's the stuff, thanks. Next thing I need is a certain kind of hot pepper. It's a murder pepper. Because it's spicy. It literally has a knife and it kills people who ask dumb questions. They grow in the area outside of time. Outside of town. You should be able to find one if you want it for a while. You whiff something that makes your eyes water. You trace it to its source. A vividly covered red shape hanging from a scraggly plant. This must be the southwest, southeast western murder pepper the fellow at the jewel is looking for. Your finger and thumb start throbbing as you pluck it. You toss it in your rucksack before it can do any more damage. Here it is. Ah, big nice one. That'll last a while. Good going. If you're looking for stuff to do, I need someone to go check my mail. I ordered a new saute nap, but I ain't got no time to fetch it myself. Here's the key to my P.O. box at the post office. Do you guys know that P.O. box means post office box? This isn't a joke. I only learned that recently. Four four one. Torn and junk mail falls out to reveal a knife sitting loose in the box. <laughs> they didn't even wrap it. You're holding it. You're pretty sure there's no such thing as a saute knife. It's too thin to use as a weapon, so it's not worth stealing. Oh, went too far. Have you got my knife? Yep, here you go. Excellent. This will work a lot better than the hammer I was using. I need one more favor, but it's the most important. I used to have this recipe for a very secret jerk sauce. But my jerk friend Dave J stole it from me and then died and took it to his grave. Literally, I mean he was buried with it. You want me to dig up his grave? He's dead, so he won't mind. Where's he buried? The Dave yard, naturally. Okay. Uh, your keen eyes detect a secluded cave in the near distance. Exploring would be a good use of your time. Let's keep going. We'll hit that on the way back. The remains look pretty restless. Skeleton of a Dave. Increased mysticality by 5. 2 AP. Cool. So if I'm right, that should bring it down to one. Yeah, okay. So there's only so far that he can actually have his stuff reduced. Skeleton bone. You don't have a bone to pick, but you do have a bone. Dave C went down in a theater. Dave was here. Dave B died with his boots on, but not his pants. Sure enough, boots, but no pants. Brown boots. One maximum AP, four muscle. I don't need muscle for nothing, sir. I mean, it was making this do more damage. But now the point of that sword is to make my gun do more damage. Yeah, see, it does crap damage now. But now that does 3 to 17 damage. Let's buff that masticality up to 20. Let's do that. And then let's, uh, let's curse you. All right. This is now getting to be overkill. Ooh, gold tooth. Dave J. Rapapapow. You dig open the grave and pry open the coffin. Instead of a corpse, it contains a garbage bag. You reach into the bag and surprised to find that it's full of pudding? Not just pudding. Pudding and motor oil. Who would do this? You finally manage to reach all the way to the bottom of the bag and retrieve a sodden lump from the bottom. You unglob the wad and dry it off and wash your arm in a nearby ditch. This had better be worth it. Dave's secret sauce recipe. Dave L. Died of a heart attack. See you in negative 36 years. Gravedigger left his lunchbox here. Vienna blood sausages and a thermos of spiked coffee. And they said there was no such thing. That's a free lunch. Dave G looking to the sky to save him, but even the feller, even the sky can't save a feller from like 40 angry bears. <laughs> These bones are jumping around to beat the dickens. Let's beat the dickens out of them. So this is 2 AP. This'll do 10. 
So if I increase my mysticality, what happens? 15. I'm really kind of going overkill on these things. These things kind of creep me out. Stone sarcophagus, a red ritual drawn on the ground in red chalk. Mostly burned rags that maybe used to be a person. Gore splattered scroll, human ashes, and a note. Cryptic note about ley lines. A note from the necromancer to one of his cultist flunkies. Time you started gathering clues about the whole perambulate and dead situation that's going around in these parts. You grab a notebook and paperclip the note into it. Necromancer journal. You found in the note about ley lines, we don't know what they are. You need somebody smarter who knows a lot about magic. That's everything you've got so far. Alright. The final stage of that whole ashes to ashes thing, well part of one at least, a human gets harder to keep track of when in powder form. It's the cremated or earthly remains of a person. Someday they'll refer to these as cremains, but you'll not approve. Let's leave them alone for now. It's covered in it's almost too covered in blood and viscera to read. Lucky for you, you've gotten all that practice reading inside of a dog. What the hell does that mean? Take a pile of human ashes, spread them out in the shape of a person, a red chalk sigil circle. Sprinkle them with sardas and a mostly perfect glass sphere where the heart would be. The actual test is more the yin thou's than that. And the, there's a bunch of weird gibberish you're supposed to say out loud. Glass sphere. Does that count? Perform the ritual. No glass spheres. Okay. Interesting that it lets you scatter them wherever. I also think I noticed that there's not as much... Might spooky. Nervous? Hell, after what I see in human skeletons, or I walk in the dang park. Uh, main quest. Secret recipe. Tempting gang. Howdy there, I'm Wandering Sally. Howdy. Sally, I'm Arizona. What's your line? Trading. Want around in these lands like it says on the label. Try to buy a little there, here and there. Make my way. Care to see the wares? Sure. Bar soap. Fungicide bomb takes a while but kills a lot of goblins. Padlock. Needles. Work boots. AP and armor. Ooh. What are my boots doing for me? One maximum AP. More AP and more armor. Hello. Aside from a light dusting of what looks like blue chalk, these boots are remarkably well preserved for having spent so much time in a grave. These boots have all sorts of extra buckles and stuff on them to help you get work done. Goes on your lapel. I know what you're thinking, not so lucky for the marigold, but actually marigolds aren't conscious, so they can't really conceive of good or bad luck. This one just does one armor. Let's get the stats. If it ain't old water and Sally. Been a while since I saw her last. Oh, she knows each other. She don't keep any particular route. She ain't been out of Born Springs in a while. Alright. You pass an abandoned campfire and an old crate catches your eye. On closer inspection, it's nailed shut. Maybe the campers used it to sit on and forgot to take it with them. Their loss is your gain if you got a crowbar. You crack that walnut and help yourself to delicious nut meat inside. <laughs> Laudanum blood milding to tonic. Plus 10 HP for the rest of the day. More laudanum. The 
Let's go see the circus. With a shout, well, more of a hiss, the skeleton leaps at you from under the underbrush. He's wearing a cavalry hat and has a cavalry saber, but isn't riding a cavalry horse, which is the main thing that differentiates cavalry from infantry, if not the only thing. Fight him. Oh my god. Skeletal cavalryman. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, and then let's do that. And then let's just turn you off for one round. Please do damage. Yes, thank you. Then my, your debuff will make that do more damage. Very nice. That's not going to be enough for a kill. Nice. Old cavalry hat. This is a little weird. You didn't expect to find a circus all the way out here. There's nothing around for miles. There's a rodeo clown manning the ticket booth. Well, there hasn't been a rodeo since the cows came home, so I guess he's just a clown. Ugh, clowns. Yeah, I hear... Yeah, them fellas put me right off my feed. They're creepy. When I was little, my uncle would give me nightmares with stories about them. Oh, sure, you mean the old tales about the demon cows and demon clowns fighting down in hell? Yeah, and how rodeo clowns dress up like that because the first rodeos were reenactments of those battles it became tradition. Yeah, I remember those stories when I was young and myself. Ain't thought about that in britches. Don't be fouling your... Ain't thought about that in decades. Don't be fouling your britches, though. These clowns are just fellas in makeup. Sorry, I'm reading words out of order. I know, still creeps me out, though. Muscle and armor. Well. As you approach, the clown puts on a basically cheery facial expression that retail employees use, and the last thing they want to deal with is a customer, but they're not allowed to say no. Welcome to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow, sir. How can I help you? I'd like to see the circus. Came to the right place. You'll need a ticket. Presumably you can sell me one. That's my job. For you, sir, a ticket will cost 5,000 meat. Say what? Does that seem a bit high? I promise you, sir, at this price, it's a real steal. Why is it so expensive? Well, this is no podunk traveling circus. We've got rides, games, food, and an amazing trend demonstration of Nathron skill by none other than Barbie Bob itself. Tell me more about these rides. Well, I suppose I should say ride, but we haven't had a single grizzly merry-go-round accident since we stopped turning it on. Uh, tell me more about the games. Oh, we've got tons! Does three count as tons? Three is more like some. We've got some of them. The food. We've got your favorites. Popcorn, sarsaparilla with the fancy new bottle caps. And get this, do you hear about this thing a fella invented? Cotton candy? Well, I think I might have. Well, it's still patented. But we're pretty sure we figured out how it works. Mostly, more or less. Oh, the boss is a master of knives, let me tell you. He does this amazing stunt where he... <laughs> where he gets a volunteer from the audience up on stage and throws knives at them. He never misses his target. Did you leave out the part where he puts an apple on their head or something? What? All right, sure. You are not doing a very good job of selling me on this. By whatever do you mean? First you ask for an outrageous sum of meat, and then you describe your circus in terms that make it sound distinctly cut rate. Well now, if you have me to spare that much, you'd be doing your best to make it sound like a magical paradise. If it really is as chintzy as you describe it, you'd be asking for a price cheap enough to overcome poor word of mouth. Which leads me to the conclusion, for some reason you don't actually want to sell me a ticket. Now now, let's not jump to conclusions. I'm pulling your leg a bit, clowning around like we do. It's all in good fun. So the actual price is 500 meat. I could buy half a horse for that. That is interesting. I like it whenever, um... Like, I like it whenever people look at the prices of things and they're like, the cost of staying at an inn in a later area and in this RPG is the same price as a drink in this earlier one. What's with the rampant inflation? All right. Let me stamp your hand for re-entry. There you go. Enjoy the show. What about my partner? Oh, partner's getting free. That's funny. 
As you enter the circus, the ticket booth clown shouts, Welcome to Barney Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus shot, so sir, sideshow sir, in a loud and enthusiastic voice. Enter the circus. You stroll into the circus. It's more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs, and find it almost entirely deserted. There aren't more than a dozen other patrons besides yourself. There's a bunch of clowns, more clowns than customers, working the booths and so on, which is a little unsettling, but at least the lines won't be long. The merry-go-round has a dirty canvas tarp over it. Condemned until further notice, we encourage anyone suffering from horse bites to consult a doctor. You got quite a hoopla going around around here. No kidding, I guess word gets around. Yeah, entertainment's at a real premium in this neck of the woods. Yep. You want a balloon? <laughs> no. Suit yourself. Am I forgetting about anything? Presumably selling tickets to the sideshow. This muscular clown is guarding the entrance of some sort of stage. Stage show until later. When? Later. Yeah, but when exactly? Later. Okay, jeez. A shooting gallery type carnival game. Howdy there, fella. What we have here is a game for sharp eyes and quick reflexes. Hope you won't take it as an insult that I suggest the other games might be more your speed, but you're welcome to try your luck all the same. Well, what's the game? Uh... On the wall behind me, I've got a bunch of thick-skinned, underinflated balloons. For 10 meat, I'll loan you a cheap, inaccurate pistol and a pile of badly made ammunition, and your goal is to pop as many of the balloons as you can. That's an unusually... Before your pistol stops working. That's an unusually honest-sounding description. I've discovered making the challenge sound exactly as difficult as it is only makes people more determined to be the one who beats it. That's a good point. All right. He hands you the cheap pistol and gestures. Shoot backwards and cross-eyed. You fumble the ammo into the pistol and fire until it's empty, at which point you can't figure out how to get it open to put it, put, put more in. Wow, not a single balloon popped. I did tell you the rules, right? How popping the balloons is the goal of the game? What's the prize? Take it to Barney Bob stage show, which is otherwise sold out. Well, let's see how much we can push it. Because we have stuff that puts moxie on us. Yeah, that's four moxie right there. This one gives us three moxie. This one gives us one moxie. That one gives us minus three moxie if you didn't read that correctly. And then we can eat and drink something. Bonus for... Hmm. Well, we've just hit ten moxie. Find something specifically for Moxie. This is made out of cow stomach, demonic cow stomach. So not only would you be eating that, you'd be eating whatever the cow ate. Are you sure? Grit, right. Hmm. 